What's up, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of the Nintendo Social Club. I originally envisioned this as a podcast, but due to some technical constraints, I thought it'd be better as a short-form video series. So here we are. Consider this a pilot of sorts. With the Nintendo Switch less than a week away, I thought now would be a perfect time to get my thoughts, maybe some expectations and predictions for the future of the console. Now, I want to do this before I get my hands on it because I plan to do another video, sort of like a review on the hardware and the software. But before we get into that, let's start from the beginning. About two years ago, Nintendo had a press conference announcing their partnership with DNA. Now, during that press conference, they kind of slipped out that they were working on a new console and it was codenamed the NX. Until about three months ago, everything we thought we knew about the console was based on rumors and speculation. It wasn't until a few weeks ago that Nintendo finally revealed the price and release date of the console, while leaving things such as online functionality, eShop virtual console, and exact specifications a mystery. We now know the eShop will launch day and date with the Switch, with few games coming exclusively to the eShop, with the virtual console and online functionality coming at a later date. With that said, let's get into some of the launch titles. First up, we have 1-2-Switch, the polarizing party game that everybody either seems to love or hate. Now, I personally think it really depends on your gaming habits. If you have a large family or a lot of people that you like to play with, definitely pick up 1-2-Switch as it can be a great party game. If you're the kind of person who plays online games or maybe online multiplayer games, maybe 1-2-Switch isn't your bag. To me, it looks like the kind of thing you gotta play to understand. And most people haven't played it, and most people who haven't played it have a negative opinion on it which I think is kind of weird. It seems to be the trend these days with everybody kind of forming their opinion based on something somebody else said online. My main concern with it is the price and how much replay value those mini games will really have. Then we have Super Bomberman R, a return to the classic frenetic multiplayer gameplay that we all know and love. Now, it wouldn't be a Konami title without a Catch-22, which is the price. $49.99, I believe, is way out of line for a game like this. I think something more like $20 or $30, considering that it's a physical release, would be a lot more appropriate for this kind of game. Um, as much as I love Bomberman and as much as I love that the Switch is like a multiplayer console dream, uh, I'm probably going to have to hold off on, on the $50 Bomberman until the price goes down or maybe there's a, a buy one get one half off sale or something like that. Next up we have Breath of the Wild. Now what could be said about Breath of the Wild that hasn't already been said? The game looks incredible. It looks amazing and I have no doubt that this game is going to be a contender for game of the year and possibly one of the best Zelda games ever created. Even with a dual console release much like Twilight Princess, this is an absolute monster of a launch title and a definite system seller. Even people holding out to play Zelda on the Wii U will likely purchase the Switch in the future as many already have. With that we move on to the digital only eShop releases and first up we have I Am Setsuna. This is a Japanese RPG by Square Enix that was originally released on the PS4 and Vita. I personally haven't played this one yet and it looks great so if there ever reaches a point where I'm starving for a game on the Switch I'll definitely have to pick this one up. I'm really hoping for a physical release for it in the future is why I haven't bought it on the PS4 yet. And that brings us to Fast RMX, a sequel to Fast Racing Neo on the Wii U. It's a futuristic racing game much like F-Zero or Wipeout. Now, if it's anything like the first one, it should be a lot of fun, and i definitely check that out if you're still waiting for Nintendo to bring back the F-Zero series. Come on, Nintendo. Just bring it back. Next on the list is Shovel Knight, a game you should be well aware of if you're a fan of 2D platformers. Now, this is one of the best retro-style games that have come out in recent memory, and I'm very excited to see it on the Switch, although I already own it for the Wii U. Now, the new Spectre of Torment campaign will actually debut on the Switch, coming to other platforms on a later date. Now this is digital only for now with Yacht Club Games saying they might try for a physical release after they finish the King Knight campaign. And last but not least we have Snipper Clips, a crowd favorite at the Nintendo Switch preview events. Now it's a multiplayer puzzle game where you work together with two to four friends to kind of solve the puzzles and advance to the next level. It previously didn't have a concrete release date but it was recently revealed that it will make it in time for the Switch's launch on March 3rd. We also have games like ARMS, Mario Kart 8, Splatoon 2, and Super Mario Odyssey coming throughout the year to lead us into the holiday season. I personally think this is a great strategy for Nintendo to continue pushing the Switch throughout the year, at the same time alleviating some of that launch day stress on our wallets. Speaking of launch day, I pre-ordered my Switch at Best Buy. Now, set it for in-store pickup with the hope there would be a midnight release, and of course Best Buy came through, and there will be a midnight release at most Best Buy stores. Hopefully, your stores are participating as well. As far as games go, I was lucky enough to pre-order the Master Edition with Best Buy as well, so I will be picking up my Switch and Neon, of course, with my Master Edition from Best Buy at the midnight release. Now, I'm going to bring my camera, and hopefully I can get some footage for your midnight release, and also going to be doing an unboxing for the console and the Master Edition. Now, Breath of the Wild is probably the only physical game I'll be purchasing at launch, with 1-2 Switch and Bomberman R being a little bit too expensive for what they are, in my opinion. As for the eShop, Snipper Clips and Fast RMX are absolute day one must-buys, in my opinion. If you haven't taken a look at those games yet, please do yourself a favor and check out the trailers, check out some of the gameplay. 
because it, they're going to be great and they're only $20 a piece so you really can't go wrong. As for accessories, I'm really only going to be getting the Pro Controller. Uh, I have it pre-ordered at Amazon just in case I'm not able to get one at the midnight release because I don't have one pre-ordered with Best Buy. Um, as for a case, the Master Edition comes with that amazing Sheikah Slate case so I'm all set there. I'll just need a glass screen protector to protect the tablet portion because we know it's going to get dropped and I do not want to crack that. And I don't even want to know what Nintendo's going to charge to replace the screen on that. I know it's pretty pricey with the Wii U gamepad. Now let's get into some thoughts on the possible future of the Switch. With it being a totally modular console, I can see Nintendo being open to sort of releasing incremental upgrades for the system, much like they did with the Game Boy series, the DS, and the 3DS. Of course, there would be multiple ways to implement this. The first way I would say is to release a Switch Pro. So that would be the actual tablet portion of the console sold separately. It would work with all of your previous games, it would work with all your previous accessories, but it will add more power to the console, allowing it to keep up with some of the newer games. Another way they can implement this is with a dock. Now, it was rumored that the dock would provide extra processing power. It's possible that that's something that they're actually working on, but that will be released at a later date. Now, this would also allow Nintendo to keep up with the evolution of modern gaming and the kind of power requirements that they have. The main problem I see here is if the game runs on the dock, how well will it run in the handheld mode, if at all? Now, we already have a game announced that only works on the tablet mode, so I don't see this being out of the realm of possibility considering Nintendo's track record. Now, where I'm saying this being a problem is it kind of reminds me of the 32X, and we all know how that turned out. Now, after a few years, after the price of the technology comes down, I also think they're going to release a more basic version of the console, maybe one without removable Joy-Cons, smaller screen, something like that, similar to the 2DS or like the Game Boy Micro. As long as it's able to play most of the games, I believe this wouldn't be a problem, but it kind of does send mixed messaging. Another great idea based on a lot of the mock-ups that we've seen online would be GameCube-style Joy-Con. Now, if they were to design a pair of Joy-Con with the GameCube button layout, and the analog triggers while also removing things like the HD rumble, the NFC reader, and the IR camera, they should be able to bring the cost down to a reasonable level. Now it could be perfect if they lined it up with the inevitable debut of the GameCube Virtual Console, and even better if they did something like an HD remake for a game like Super Mario Sunshine, possibly even releasing a compilation of some GameCube titles on a physical cartridge. Not to mention the idea of playing Smash with these bad boys. With that said, that's all the time we have for this episode of the Nintendo Social Club. Let me know in the comments down below what your plans are for launch day, whether that means camping outside of Best Buy for some extra stock, waiting for the mailman to come, or skipping it altogether. Until next time, peace.